All right, so we are on 7.04, the Enlightenment in Age of Reason. This goes along with your student guide pages 204 to 207 and your human odyssey pages 332 to 337. As always, please make sure that you are doing your human odyssey reading pages. Um, we just can't cover enough of what's uh, needed for this lesson in this flip video or in class, okay? All right, so let's move on here and get started. So for our introduction, um, the Enlightenment and Age of Reason. The great minds of the scientific revolution have discovered the rational orderly laws of the physical world. Might natural law exist in other realms as well? Some thinkers said it did. They gathered to discuss how human reason could be used to improve the world and the people who lived in it. The era in which these great thinkers emerged became known as the Age of Reason or Enlightenment. They asked difficult questions about the nature of human beings and wrote about the nature and role of governments. Their lively discussions and enthusiasm led to changes that still affect us today. So that's just the introduction part. Nothing to fill in on your student guide yet. Um, define um, philosoph uh, and deist and describe their beliefs. Uh, explain the ideas of the scientific revolution uh, that were applied to the social world. Identify Benjamin Franklin, John Locke, uh, Louis XIV. Identify the major events and people of the glorious revolution and describe the consequences of the revolution. And identify Voltaire, Montesquieu, Diderot, and Condorcet. And so you'll see there's a lot of important people um, that we will be covering during this lesson. So this is uh, on pages 320, uh, I'm sorry, this is on page 204. Use pages 327 and 328 in your Human Odyssey book to help you. Um, so once you read that page uh, 327 and 328, you need to answer these questions. Uh, the statement that best describes what John Lockett is explaining in the first two paragraphs, um, that would be that all men are naturally free to do as they wish as long as they do not harm anyone else. Um, and then in the fourth and fifth paragraphs, John Locke argues that men who enter into civil society must follow the rules and decisions of the majority and give up their freedom under natural law. But in exchange, the men will see, receive uh, protection. And so that that is true. Um, that's what he argues, which is interesting because that kind of goes along with with what we're we're kind of going through in today's day and age as well. Um, and then the statements that describe John Locke's comments regarding legislative power one of the first actions of the society is to establish the legislative power. The legislative power is the supreme power in government, and the only reason to create laws should be for the good of the people. And then according to the last paragraph cited, what should the people do if the civil society ceases to function for the good of the people? Um, and that would be to dissolve uh, the government by exercising their natural rights and create a new civil society that works to their best interest. Not quite sure why that was there. There we go. OK, um, so again, that goes along with pages 327 and 328 in your Human Odyssey book. All right, next page here, the social world. So this would be number one on your student guide. So Galileo and Newton had focused on investigating the physical world. Other thinkers began to suggest that there also may be laws or principles that apply to the social world. What did they mean by social world? Uh, the social world referred to the world of human activity and government. And you can think about that as being social. You know, we're moving around, we're social, we're active with other people. So the social world um, involved human activity and government. And then we've got human reason, the age of reason. According to John Locke and other thinkers, laws or principles of the social world could be understood by applying the power of human reason. The period from the 1600s to the late 1700s became known as the age of reason, is, has also been called the Enlightenment because so many thinkers believed that reason could illuminate the truth, meaning you know you use reason and you'll, you'll figure out or find the truth. John Locke's early life. John Locke was born in England during the reign of King Charles I, who insisted on exercising the divine right of kings. When he was 10, he, his father fought in the Civil War as a roundhead, which we learned about roundheads in our last lesson. He was attending a school in London when the king was executed. He studied medicine in Oxford and became a physician. He was invited to become a member of the Royal Society, which was a scientific organization. Locke flees from England. John Locke fled England and went to the Netherlands. He did not feel safe because his writings showed that he did not approve of the way King Charles ruled. 
John Locke believed there are moral laws at work in the universe. He called this moral order natural law. Give one example that Locke used to explain how reason can be used to discover these moral laws. So in Locke's view, reason tells us that murder is naturally wrong, and so is stealing. So again, that kind of goes back towards that, that moral, moral compass, um, your conscience kind of telling you right from wrong, not just, not just written law telling you right from wrong. Natural rights. According to Locke, natural rights are the rights of life, liberty, and the ownership of property. The job of governments, according to Locke, was to respect natural law and protect natural rights. Protestant leaders do not want King James II to rule England. So why did Protestant leaders oppose King James II as ruler of England? King James II appointed Catholics to high positions in the army, in the government, and in universities. When his subjects protested, he simply ignored them. The people wanted the throne to go to James, uh, James's daughter Mary, and her Dutch husband, William of Orange. The English people called the overthrow of King James the Glorious Revolution. And remember, an overthrow is basically when they come in and kind of, you know, take over the government. Almost in a sense of anarchy, but there is ruling after that. Bill of Rights. As King and Queen of England, William and Mary had to accept a Bill of Rights, which restricted the powers of the King and formally increased the powers of Parliament. A summary of the Bill of Rights, it said that a King needed Parliament's permission to set aside laws maintain an army in peacetime, or tax people. It said the government had to be based on law, not on a king's desires. It banned Roman Catholics from England's throne. So you can see there, it kind of, it was the start of, you know, not allowing one person to have absolute power. Okay, so this is the two treaties of government. This is that page that we went over at the very start of this flip video lesson. It's the same information, um, just in a different format. So feel free to use this if you'd like. It is page, I believe that was 204 in your student guide. Let me check really quickly here. Yeah, 204. This was the, the document analysis in your student guide, okay, for the treaties of government. All right, moving on. King Louis XIV. King Louis XIV of France called himself the Sun King because he considered himself as important as the sun. The reign of King Louis XIV. King Louis XIV believed in the divine right of kings. He believed he had received his authority from God and did not have to share power with anyone else. And we, we learned about that divine right of kings again in our last lesson. He and his courtiers lived lives of splendor and excess. He did not involve himself with the struggles of working people, the sufferings of the poor, or the trials of those being persecuted for their religious uh, beliefs. So he would be a good example of that hierarchy that we always talk about, the, you know, the triangle. He's kind of way up here at the top, and um, he really doesn't bother himself with the people at the bottom. Philosophes. Um, philosophes are political thinkers in 18th century France who believed that reason and knowledge could bring justice, equality, and freedom. Deism. Deism is a system of thought that holds that God is the creator of the universe and its natural laws, but that God does not interfere with the laws of the universe or its people's affairs. And you can see that relates to the word deity. Deity has anything to do with God. Deism is this system of thought that holds God as the creator of the universe, but not interfering. All right, Voltaire. Voltaire was a French philosopher and writer. His writings questioned the teachings of the church and his poems made fun of the French government. He believed people should be free to use reason and make up their own minds about religion, politics, and philosophy. He also believed that enlightened advisors should guide the king in his policies and his laws. So he didn't believe that, you know, the sun king should have all of the reign or all of the rule, rule that he should have advisors to help him. Okay, Montesquieu. He was a French philosopher who had lived in England. In his work called The Spirit of Laws, Montesquieu wrote that there were three kinds of government, monarchies, republics, and despotic governments. According to Montesquieu, in a monarchy, a king or queen holds limited powers. He said a republic could either be an aristocracy in which just a few people hold power or a democracy in which all the people hold power. He described a despotic government as one controlled by a tyrant, a ruler who holds all the power. Montesquieu uh, opposed despotic governments. He thought either monarchies or republics could be good forms of government. 
He also believed that the best way to protect liberty was to divide a government's powers among three branches, a legislative branch, uh, which was the lawmaking branch, an executive branch, which was the law enforcing branch, and a judicial branch, uh, which existed, um, which had the courts uh, in it. And you can see that's very similar to our democracy um, form of government today. Diderot. Diderot was a French philosopher who published and organized a collection of knowledge called the Encyclopédie. His Encyclopédie included a diverse range of articles on subjects such as philosophy, politics, swordsmanship, farming, and calligraphy. French religious and political leaders condemned his work because some of his articles reflected his atheist beliefs. Condorcet. His major work was his sketch for a historical picture of the progress of the human mind. In that book, he argued that men and women could achieve perfection if only they could free themselves of unreasonable rules created by monarchs and religious leaders. He believed that with the right laws and government based on reason, people could eliminate evil from the world. And then we come to Benjamin Franklin. Many European enlightened thinkers admired Benjamin Franklin's confidence in the human ability to understand the physical and social world. Here we need to list a few examples from the reading uh, that show that Franklin used reasons to, reason to understand the physical and social world. So the invention of the Franklin stove, um, his experiments with lightning and electricity, his documentation of experiments, his writings on uh, political philosophy, and his role as a diplomat and a statesman. So all of those show where he was using, um, you know, the understanding of his physical and social world using what he had around him to make things better and, and, and to improve. So there we come to the end. By failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. I like that quote and saying. So thank you for joining me today and uh, we'll continue on with the lesson in class.